kitty cat. Kitty cat, you can't claw my face. That's where I'm going to start the cold open, right there. Wow, thanks. You're welcome. Um, welcome to a Fish and Flower podcast. I'm Flower, a.k.a. Rose, and I actually have Rose lore um, that I thought you would appreciate, because I just remembered this thing. Uh, when when I was washing my hair this morning, I was like, while I was talking about my hair, I was like, try to think of Rose lore to give you for this. Yes. And I thought of one. I was like, you know what? I am 98% sure I never brought this up to Stingray. And I feel like Stingray would appreciate it. I used to do ballet. I I think you, like, meant, like, once or twice, but you didn't really talk about it. Uh, but, like, respectfully, I get it. Like, you have those vibes, but also what the fuck. Um, yeah, no. So, uh, my ballet teacher, uh... It's like you can't a, eat my fingers. <laughs> middle of nowhere's, uh, so, like, there's one ballet teacher, right? Um, and when she was growing up, she had really back, back, back problems to the point where, like, she was actually in a back brace. And, like, she would always say the reason why it wasn't worse is because she did ballet and all this stuff. And that was, like, the whole spiel. <clears throat> um, and, uh, so... My mom, instead of, because, like, I had back problems, instead of, you know, taking me to a fucking doctor, my mother's solution was to take me to go to Your mother school. not taking care of you, or are we really surprised? No. Um, so I did that for, like, I, wa- I want to say I started when I was, like... Kitty cat. Seven. Kitty cat. Eight, and I went until I was, like, 13. And I only stopped because I was about to level up to, like, the I... older age group, because I was... It, they were having questions about it, because I was, like, skilled enough to like, do sh- go to the next age group, but I was way younger than everyone else there. Like, they were, like, 16, 17, and I would have been 13, right? Um, but there's, like, this one move where you, you go to... I don't remember the word for it, but... It's you can't eat my toes your, either! When you're on I'm your sorry. toes, and you have one leg up with your foot up against your knee, and you spin around a circle. Um, and, like, some people can do, like, multiple circles when they do that, right? And I could just yeah. automatically do two. I could do a double. And that's not normal. Like, you're not supposed to automatically be able to do that, I'm pretty sure. And so they were like, you have the skill set of, like, the Oh, Lord, old, kitty cat. But you're the age oh, of, Lord, like, kitty the cat. Or, oh, Lord, kitty cat. Oh, Lord, kitty cat. middle age group. Oh, Lord. So they were kind of She almost fell off the bed onto the dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. God. Where are you going? Where yeah. are you going? <laughs> so they were contemplating moving me up uh, to the next age group, which means um, going oh, at least back. two okay. times a week. And at that point, I had, my mother was very much, um... One of those parents were, that was very much, uh, schoolwork, 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 uh, none of that creative stuff, despite the fact that she was the one that forced me into that creative stuff, so I had to quit ballet in order to focus on school. What? Yeah. Even though she was the one that forced me into it. You know, good times. But that's my rose lore for the day. Uh, my lore, oh lord, the cat is running. She's running. You can't go in there. I lord any bite. These animals are gonna kill me. I'm sorry, Jesse. Hold on. I gotta close my door. Put this cat on the floor and close the door. Ebby Ray, you coming in here, Ebby Ray? Ebener. Ebener. Ebener, Nene. <sighs> Come here. Come here. What would you do if I just started playing Stardew Valley? I, Bestie, please. I'm knocking you out, Ibby Ray. I'm so sorry. For a second there, I thought you were saying you were locking me out, and I was like, what the fuck? Rude. I thought you loved me. Okay, um, my name is Fish, aka Stingray, and like, I don't know, I truly read The Wicker King. I have a cat. I'm stressed out. It's been sleeping this all day long until now. Because I came in here and I ate my lunch. And it was like, hey. And there's also a dog drooling on my lap the whole time. We still haven't named the cat because I'm too scared to be like, hey, mom. We're going to name this cat something Wicker King related. Too bad. Why are you jumping into the trash can that has Shrek in it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I don't use it for a trash can. It just has shit in it. Okay. Um, I'm going to take that as your fun fact for the day. I'm stressed out. I believe in you. We can be stressed together. Um, this is very much a Stream of Questions podcast, very similar to how we talk to each other on a daily basis. 
On today's episode, we are talking about the Wicked Barkin by... Oh, I suddenly forgot his name. Uh, Gabe something? <laughs> yes, Gabe Cole Navoa. Um, which is, um, a trans mask, um... Latinx, there we go, that's the terminology. <laughs> um, yeah, the book, uh, with gay pirates, literally gay pirates, that's the whole reason why we read this book, because I saw a newer book coming out that was gay pirates, and I went instantly, yes, we are reading this, and we both had a good time. Spoiler. Yes, I've never read a pirate book before, or a gay pirate book before, so, you know. I have, and it literally reminded me so much of a mix of that book, and, um, the one Cat. book by Aiden Thomas that I've read, which is another... Um, trans, uh, slash non-binary Latinx author, um, which is hilarious because Aiden Thomas did rate this book five stars. Because we read it right after it came out, and so there weren't many reviews, and right off the top was Aiden Thomas with five stars, and I was like, that's funny. Um, because it was very much reminding me of that. Uh, but before we go into the actual book, um, I get to talk about content warnings. We got death, violence, grief, alcohol, blood, vomit, slavery, colonization, genocide, and a little, little bit of um, misgendering or um, using wrong pronouns. Um, th th I'm gonna go into it now. I suddenly forgot the Mar. That's their name. Um. So Mar. Uh. Okay, but like, can I? Yes. When I looked at the looked at the, uh, what's it called, the content warnings on StoryGraph. I was like, the blood, vomit, okay, normal, normal. Ay, ay, ay! Me too. I too go, ay, ay, ay. It's the cat. I don't know why I started saying ay, ay, ay. I don't, I've never said that before in my life. I just started saying it. Normal things. Um, and I was like, okay, yeah, that's normal, whatever. And then I was, did you just see colonization? I'm like, okay! Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like just a whole plot point that happens in this good times um but yes mar the main character uh does preferably use they them pronouns um but due to things that happen right in the very beginning of this book uh their whole entire world is switched upside down and so uh to make it easier on themselves um they do not tell everyone uh knew that they meet this um so everyone just uses he, him pronouns automatically, uh, they don't even tell, like, the love interest about their proper pronouns and all this stuff, um, and whatnot, and I get that they're trans masks, so, like, gray area, but, like, despite the fact that everyone uses he, him pronouns for Mars' character, I, we, will be using they, them, because that is their preferred pronouns, um, this character's pronouns, you know. <sighs> I feel like you should mention that they don't mind he, him pronouns, but they, that they do prefer they don't. Yes. They don't mind. <laughs> they don't mind. Um, Anything is better than she, her. You know? Yeah, that is literally a thing they bring up, that they don't mind as long as uh, they don't use she, her pronouns. Also, um, they prefer looking younger because being called a young boy is better than being called a man. <laughs> so... Um, you know, uh, we love that. Uh, but yes, we're gonna go into the book. Uh, how many pages of notes do you think I took? Handwritten, I should bring up, because I was doing it outside. At least five. Four. Well, you know. I, I did it, I did it the smart way, where, um, I would read 10% of the book, and then take notes on the, that 10%, and then read 10% of the book, and then take notes on that 10%. So, uh, it's split up, and then, also, then I'm not spending, like, my whole time reading, uh, leaving the world in my head of this book to go take notes about it, um, and whatnot. Be proud, bestie. I think I only took, like, four, four and a half pages of notes for The Wicker King, but I, did I write down absolutely everything? Yes. Yes. I mean, this is us we're talking about. Do you really need to know every little detail about every Katie Robert I read for this podcast? No. Do you get no. to know them? Yes. Kitty cat. Um, but yeah, that's that's what uh, this book is. Um, also, it takes place in the 1800s. That's the other thing. In the Caribbean. So, you could imagine the things that are going to be happening. Um, the devil is a part of this book. Let's go. <laughs> Didn't know that when I started it. You know, good times. Um, 
But the book starts uh, with a storm. Um, we learn instantly. Hey, that no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we instantly learn that Mar has magic, specifically fire and ice magic. Um, their father is like super drunk and uh, can't. I wrote down drive the ship, but like, is it pilot the ship? I don't know. Um, their father is the captain of the ship. Steer the ship? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, normally their father would be the type of person to easily, uh, steer through a storm. Um, no one on the crew has, like, had any issues, like, in, like, their whole entire life. Um, no injuries or anything. Um, I wonder why. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, normally it wouldn't be an issue. Why is my neck so sore? Um, well, why is my foot asleep? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I've been sitting for two uh, minutes. Their dad's, like, super drunk right now. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, they go into to the captain's quarters to check on their father. Um, and, uh, when they do their father's partner, I forget his name, um, but he's kind of generally the cook of the ship and all this stuff, uh, who is, uh, hinted at being the romantic partner of Mars' father. Um, good time. Oh, yeah. Um, is in there, and so he leaves and, uh, gives Mara a look, and he's like, mm -hmm, you okay, blah, 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 um, all the stuff goes out to help the crew. Um, so, uh, their father forces Mara to drink alcohol, um, because we love underage drinking. I'm pretty sure Mara's, like, 15 or 16, like, their birthday this day. Um, 16. So, they yeah. pretend to be 15 because they look younger, because, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so, uh, when drunk, it's hinted at that their father isn't as accepting about their gender identity, um, you know, good times, um, the mad, uh, Mars magic has been going off all day as a warning, uh, it's kind of has, like, this own warning system, um, of when Mars in danger, and, uh, Mars notices there's something odd about the storm in specific, um, there's a story about the day that Mars was, uh, born when they were still born. Um, and their father made a deal for 16 years with El Diablo, aka the devil. Um, and that's basically what we learned at I love the very, me. very beginning about the deal. Um, and it literally goes like, my father made a deal with El Diablo for 16 years of my life when I was still born. And then, it's my 16th birthday. Just, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, their father believes they're all gonna die. Good time. Um, and then a man dressed, uh, in all black appears behind Mar. Uh, his, like, mustache is smoking or something, and it looks like he's almost, like, levitating. Um. He's so real for that, you know? But this, uh, man isn't wet, which is a big deal because, you know, big storm, so how did he enter the room and not get wet? It's oh, almost like God. maybe a yeah. devil or something. Um. Um, Who would have so, thought? Uh, Mar is surprised about the uh, sudden appearing man, who is obviously El Diablo, um, using proper pronouns for Mar, automatically. Um, we love, we I love, mean, at least he's respectful. He, I was gonna say, listen, <laughs> he may be the devil, but he respects your pronouns. I don't know if we can say the same about God in this situation. <laughs> we can't even say that much about Mar's father some of the time, so you know... Well, to, well, he dies, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Spoilers for the next sentence, I was going to say, or two. Um, so, their father mentioned something about the man getting Mars' soul if uh, they die, if Mar dies. Um, and it's like, stay back, because if you die, he has your soul. Um, we don't want that. Uh, the man is the devil, is uh, confirmed, who... Uh, takes her father. Man um, is double confirmed. <laughs> yeah, it's like double confirmed. Uh, the ship is on fire and Mar uses their magic to put it out. Um, but El Diablo lights it again and splits the ship in half. And the only person who survives is Mar. And that is how Sorry, I think you skipped over a really big thing right there. Yes, I'm gonna go into it. I didn't write it down apparently. I assume you're talking about uh, what the deal was. No, I'm talking about. Uh, Mar's dad shooting El Diablo and then oh, the bullet. Yeah, I didn't write that down. Yes. Well, it's been like a whole month since we've read this book. Um, 
Yeah. I still remember everything, apparently. Look at me go. Yeah, so, um, Laura's father who shot El Diablo. I really like this book, okay? And then, uh, El Diablo puts it in a Mars pocket, which is a big deal for a thing that happens later on. Um, I love parallel scenes and books. <laughs> I eat that shit up. That makes sense for you. I like it, too. So. What do you yeah. mean that makes sense for me? <laughs> I mean, that does make sense for you. I get it. I get it. Listen, okay. I was talking uh, in one of my book club group chats, whatever, um, on Discord about the true fiction I was reading. Or true fiction what? True crime. <laughs> um, and uh, I was like, the parallel is nice because the author wrote it starting with the last his last victim and how uh, that led to him getting caught. And then it goes into him telling the stories of all of his other victims because when he would tell the stories of how... Uh, he killed people, he would start at the ending and then move backwards. And so she was like, fine, then I'll start at your ending. <laughs> and so she started it with his incarceration. And I was like, you know what? That seems like a funny laugh at him, because fuck this guy. So, you know... You know, every time I talk about this book, I just want to read it more. And I don't read... Barely. I don't really read nonfiction, so maybe I should. I mean, if you want. It's a good... It's For true crime, it's pretty good. I've read... A good few thanks to this book club, and uh, it's one of the ones that I've liked more. Uh, it's really well written, and it's easily like it's easy to read. Not the topic, but the way it's written is easy. Um, oh yeah, it's very simple. I though you I gotta, do enjoy to, true crime, so yes. um, you gotta be aware because um, most of the stuff that happens um, because a lot of it uh, takes place after he was incarcerated, which was in 2012, and he's bisexual, so literally. Every single time uh, police would interview anyone in his life, in his past and whatnot, they'd be like, did you ever get a sign that he was homosexual? <laughs> like, they literally went up to all his army buddies and went to, did you get a vibe that he was homosexual? And it's just like, just got that little inkling of homophobic. And you're like, guys, please, I get he's not a good guy. He is Hear me out, though, there's probably more straight killers. Of people, but, like... <laughs> There's probably more straight killers than gay killers, like, statistically. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's, like, a whole thing in that book. Anyways, on to the next 10% of this book. Um, hey, don't murder people. <laughs> don't make deals with El Diablo either, so whatever. True. Um, more I mean, you can. I would, I would advise against it, though. Mar gets uh, saved by another pirate crew. Um, <laughs> so everyone assumes they're male. And, uh, uh, oh yeah, Mar is like super happy that their binding stayed in place. Um, which, like, understandable. Um, during okay, everything. but also, <laughs> also, can we talk about the fact that they have to wear their, their makeshift binder? Like basically twenty four seven the yep. time, and they probably received rib damage. Please don't wear your binders twenty four seven. Please take care of yourself. Dude, Thank you. I I would be surprised if there wasn't some like some type of fungus because of that too. Because of all the sweat. I mean, it's the Caribbean. So you're oh the yeah, and they were in the water beforehand. They were in the water right before that because they passed under the water. Um, they're usually wearing dark colors and long sleeve shirts in the Caribbean. And you're constantly wearing this binding, not changing it, uh, not taking you off to sleep ever because you're sleeping in a public place, all this stuff. Um, I did like the added detail that their father's partner was the one to make the binding for them. That was very sweet. We love Leo. We really do. Um, but yes, they're very happy that Leo. in place so they could like pretend at least to be um, male. We love that. Um, Bass is the son of the captain. Oh, which I you didn't, didn't like, like at first, Bass. which, what the fuck is wrong with you? I instantly didn't like him, and that's funny. Um, so, uh, they rescue, um, Mar, and, uh, the p crew member that rescued them, uh, was ordered to do it by Bass, who was the son of this captain, um, and, you know, it's really, um, technically a pirate royalty romance, um, anyway... <laughs> You know, I really love how Bass just saw this pretty boy in the ocean. And he was like, I want that pretty boy. Get him out the ocean. Yeah, well, that's basically what happens. 
Um, and, uh, you know, my least favorite part about Bass is, like, they, Bass constantly, like, you gotta thank me for saving your life, and, like, forcing Mar to get him coffee all the time, despite the fact that he, he doesn't like coffee. And Mar eventually very quickly learns this, and it's like, and still does it, and when Bass learns that they knew it this whole time, it is like, wait, then why? And then they're like, because you asked me to? Um, so it's very much like Bass wants a friendship throughout the whole entire book, and Mars dealing with the trauma of seeing their whole entire family and crew die. Um, while Bass is just there, uh, happy-go-lucky being like, oh, you should thank me for saving your life, and Mars like, I don't know, should I? Because, like, sometimes I think it'd be better if I was dead. Yay! I always pick happy books for this podcast. Don't worry, me too, bestie. Uh, I kind of want to, like, be, like, you know, about Bass for a second, because, like, I don't think he meant it like that. I don't think he was trying to be, like, callous about it all. I think he was just, you know, like, I don't know. That's just the vibe I get. Yeah. I think it's, I don't think Bass, no? Why is FedEx going up my road now? What the hell? Um, it's 4.52 p.m. Um, no, I don't think Bass was, like, doing it on purpose. I think Bass is just being Bass. Um, and the way that he has Mar no, is he has no brain cells. There's nothing in his head. That he's so pretty. Yeah. He's he's uh, he's, he's, he's apparently Bass. really pretty. There's nothing in his head. It's okay. I relate. Yeah. Um, Bass basically forces Mar to be his uh, servant. Um, Mar basically becomes the lower level in the hierarchy of the ship. Um, basically having to do any and all uh, tasks that no one wants to do. Um, like clean the dishes. Um and scrub the floors, and get, uh, Bass ate coffees until Bass's father comes up to them and is like, hey, he doesn't like coffee. Uh, oh, yeah, this is where I wrote down the comment, officially recommend Cemetery Boys to Sam Ray. Hello, I am here to officially recommend Cemetery Boys to you. I've thought about it. It's good. It's, I'll um, probably read it eventually. It, it's, uh, also, um, trans Latinx. But, and why? How about you, hold on. How about you notice that all, the all there's been two so far, the books we've read together that have trans main characters, I, I ate that shit up. Yeah. Um, you know, it's almost like you slightly at least relate to them or something. Yeah. Yeah. Who uses yeah. Pronouns, you know. Yeah. I, like, wonder. officially, like, Everywhere, like, officially, I finally put the day in front of the sheet. I'm fine. I'm normal. I'm, I'm okay. I'm comfortable. Listen, I remember the day that you changed it. Or at least I remember the day when I saw it, and I was like, oh. Okay, I'll ask them to see if I should use they pronouns in vlogs now. So now I've just switched to, to saying Stingray and they all the time. It's whatever. We're just gonna do a moment of silence while FedEx slowly goes down the road. I, I think that's partially why I wish you all the best. It's really kind of like punched me in the face. I'm not gonna lie. I just didn't really want to say it because, like, you know. Mm. Is that a cat? I hate that my hair is still blue because I'm literally a they them blue haired bitch, you know? And, like, I can't. Like, I can't. I believe in you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Cemetery Boys, um, trans Latinx character, uh, dealing with. Because, you know, um,. A lot of the main character's family in that one uh, speaks Spanish a lot, um, and a lot. I, ch- I Google Spanish- translated so much for this book. <laughs> yes, uh, that is also a thing in this. Um, a lot of Spanish language uh, is very gendered, and so a lot of the main character's family will use uh, she pronoun words automatically for the main character, and the main character uh, has to debate whether or not um, having to do the fight of reminding them about pronouns and their personal identity or just letting it slide uh and letting it eat them up inside but also ghosts yeah (laughs) and i know you like ghosts so you know hear me out it'd be a great book for you um so uh mark can't sleep uh for obvious reasons you know trauma (laughs) yeah no no yeah. I get it. So they go to the deck um, to stare out to the ocean, uh, where El Diablo reappears um, and says Mar's supposed to be dead as well with everyone else. Um, there's, a, there's a reason why they are not. El Diablo offers a deal to trade Mar's soul for their father's, um, 
and says that a decision has to be made by September 22nd. By this point, I think it's around August 4th or 5th, um, depending on the time of day. Okay, um, hold on again. I feel like it's easier to refer to Ramar as they, them, than it was to refer to, uh, what's their name? Ben. Yeah, Ben. As they, them, because, yes, Mar is technically misgendered in this one, but not as much as yeah. it happens, and I wish you all the best, and so I feel like it's kind of, you know what I mean? Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, also, Mar is, like, contemplates making or agreeing to this deal, but decides not to because uh, they recognize that their father would not approve of that. Um... So, uh, the days pass in a blur, you know, because trauma. <laughs> and also mm -hmm. costly having to work on a gru on a ship is grueling work, um, I assume. Um, especially when you're a smaller person like Mar, um, where you can easily pass as 15 years old. Um, so, uh, yeah. Here, I want to reread this book now. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> um, so, uh, their magic is starting to hurt, uh, from not being used, uh, if they don't use up some of their magic a little bit at a time, or, uh, let it all out at once, it starts to hurt them, um, until they blow, and then, like, something really bad can happen, and all this stuff, um, which is why they would, uh, on their ship, everyone just knew that they had magic, and so they could, like, d use it to, like, cool down glasses, or, um, uh, heat something, I don't know, uh, really easily, all the time, without anyone really caring, um, they also have kind of like tattoos all over their body, um, which there is some history about that is brought up in this book. Um, that glow. I really enjoy that fact. Yeah, so they so uh, they have to wear like dark clothing all the time to hide the glowing. Uh, cause I like want to glow from the inside out, <laughs> like more. Uh, <laughs> oh, so, I'm okay. Uh, so. Tito is a member of the crew. Uh, it's hinted at, at being this captain's uh, version of Leo, where he's a everybody's a gay. <gasps> yes. Um, Tito is also the one who saved Mar um, by Bass's order, technically. But you know, um, so Tito uh, is working with Mar, and Mar's like lugging things around. Mar is one hurting due to the lack of using magic, but also not sleeping. Yay! So that's not a good mixture, and Tito recognizes something's wrong, um, and thinks Mar's sick, so, um, l covers for them, um, Mar goes into a random storeroom, uh, makes sure no one's in there, and uses some fire magic, uh, to release some of it when Tito walks in. <laughs> Next 10%, um, so Tito just instantly leaves, uh, the room, and Mar is like, uh, freaked out, scared, uh, that he will tell someone, um, also scared that if he does tell someone, including the captain, uh, that Mar will be basically, um, executed, so, you know, um, it's fine, we're fine, yeah, we're not, yeah, here, uh, Mar covers the whole entire storeroom in ice, just a nice thick layer of ice, um, so this I mean, time, at least it's nice in there, because it's hot out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this, the whole time, Mar has been feeling like they're being watched. Um, they just assumed it was members of the crew, or, you know, just them matching things for not being able to sleep. But no, um, they have been being watched by Dami, I think that's how you pronounce their name, who also goes by them, they, them pronouns, who is a demon. Who is I... a off slash second book in the series, uh, main character. I think it's about this character, so, you know. Hear me out. I didn't like Dami at first, but as it went on, I was like, I get it. I understand. That was me with Bass. Um, so Dami You know, I, I wish I was Dami. Like, be serious. True. Um, as soon as, uh, D Mar realizes that Dami is a demon, uh, they kick Dami out. Um, so, Tito is... Oh, yeah, I did write down Tito's captain's partner. Uh, Mar goes off to go after Tito, but runs into Bass instead. Um, and then he just... Not me. And then... Well, yeah. Um, Bass, uh, tries to talk to, um, Mar. And Mar just, um, starts to cry. And Bass is... So robusty. Um, 
and Bass takes them to his room. Um, after a bit of talking, um, and whatnot, um, and after they calm down, uh, Mar returns to the storm room to find it melted and the scent of sulfur, which is a sign of a demon or El Diablo. Um, also, I just thought about something. Uh-huh. The way everything was spoken about, it's implied that there's multiple El Diablos. Yes. Yeah. Which, I don't know. Yeah. Um, we love that El, Di El Diablo is wanting an MLM. <laughs> um, listen, for a bit there, I really wanted this to be, uh, instead of a romance with Bass, a romance with El Diablo. Yeah, I know. I'm glad it wasn't, respectfully. I mean, that would have been a good time, too. I'm just saying. Like, this book was good. I liked it. I rated it for I imagine that's out there somewhere just for you, bestie. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. Thank God. Um, I'll find it, don't worry. Okay. But I found the Shrek book. I was gonna say, you found me Shrek's butt. <laughs> it was just the real, it just came up when I was talking with the reels one day. I don't know what you want from me with that one. That was, that was the, that was the universe talking right there. Mm-hmm. Um. What, that, yeah, you totally believe that, that's what that mm-hmm sounded like. Mm-hmm, yep. Um, Tito basically disappears for five days with the excuse of illness, um, Dami taunts more into turning a chunk of the ocean into ice, like a giant chunk of ocean into ice below the surface. Um, you know, I imagine that takes a lot of magic. Um, yeah. Uh, which is actually kind of good for Mar because they did need to use up some magic um, and whatnot. Uh, so Bass almost catches them for a bit there. I thought Bass did see it. And I uh, was gonna bring it up at a later point, but no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they get he should. He there ain't nothing in his head. He wouldn't notice if anything was fishy, anyways. Don't worry. Okay, they get to land. He probably I, did see it, but he didn't think about it. He was like, okay. <laughs> it gave me very much uh, Arthur in uh, the BBC Merlin, where literally there's a scene. Oh my god. Where <laughs> shut the fuck up. I will show the show to you someday. Someday. It's literally on YouTube for free right now. I can go watch it if I wanted to, but I will not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they don't have season one. So... so why are we watching Cart Supper? I don't know. <laughs> again. I, I, I almost uh, watched it on my own again. What is wrong with you? <laughs> A lot of things. Can't you tell? Anyways, um, it is quite yes, season Yes, I speak to you every day. There's, there's, there's a lot of scenes in Merlin where, uh, Merlin just does magic, and Arthur's, like, right there, and, like, he's, like, whispering the words, like, the magic incantation, and also, after he does magic, his eyes glow gold for a hot minute, and Arthur just never notices. Like, there's this one scene where they're, like, playing a dice gambling game, and literally Hold Merlin on. uses magic right in front of his face, like, they're facing each other, to make the dice show up the way that he wants it to, and his eye, like, he whispers the words, and his eyes glow gold right in front of Arthur, and Arthur's like, ah... Oh. I Hear me out, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't fucking know. So I think it's just, um, dumb games. Hear me out. No, hear me out. I think it's just people who are portrayed as author and authorian retellings are all stupid. Because any of the ones you've told me about or the ones that I've experienced myself, Arthur, or the perceived Arthur, is just very, very stupid. Yes. yes you're <laughs> I think it's just really Arthur. Stupid. I love him though. Like I can't help it. I really Nick like him. I am real, but I did like I did like Nick as a character, even I though you told me that I have a thruple in the second one. It better happen. Literally, there's a point where Cell and Nick are talking in um ye olden language, uh, and Bree barely knows any of it. So like she's just there, just like I don't know really what they're saying. And I translated all of it. Don't worry. Um, so I can give you the translations, but basically it's them back and forth, they're like, yeah, she's pretty hot, yeah, I know, I love her, and you love her too, we both love her, because she's, like, really hot and super cool and really nice and, uh, a pretty cool lady, and I want to kiss her, and you've already kissed her, and, you know, it's just a thing that we both really like this girl. <laughs> Hear me out, Bestie, is this the moment where I break some big news to you? Yeah. About the Wicker King? August, Jack, and Rita end up at a thruple. Mm. 
not the absolute silence. You know what? It's not that surprising. I mean, literally, I, 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 yeah. one of them banged her, and then the other uh, one August. To bed they were banging like crazy. And, uh, right afterwards. Yeah, they were naked. And, well, but also, I was going to bed with them afterwards. I think that's kind of a little bit. And then, no, and then in the Golden Raven, Jack was like, I don't feel like I'm allowed to see August like this, like, post banging on <laughs> Uh... But also, oh, but also, but also, but also, but also, oh my god, um, apparently at the same time that, uh, August and Rita were messing around, her and Jack kind of had a thing starting at the same time, they were basically dating the same chick at the same time, is what I read in this thingy, I'm sick, anyways, um, you know, that's good times, um, okay, back to like, the I time. like Rita now, like, I like her now, you like her now, that she's in a <laughs> No, just she's grown on me. But Jack and August are still my beloved. Like she, she, she's there. She's just Ken, you know. <laughs> there, Barbie. She's just Ken. Oh my. <laughs> Which is not really. They're all very needed in this relationship. That's just me in my head preferring like kind of visualing Jack and August there, you know. <sighs> Anyways, um. <laughs> Back to this book, because that's a future episode. Okay, I'm okay. Um, they get to land, uh, and then I say, and I quote, Bass actually said something funny. I don't remember what it was, but it was a part of where I wrote it down. I don't know either, don't worry. I wrote down that I found it funny, but I didn't write down what the funny thing was. I don't know why you do that, honestly. I don't know why I would do that either. I think I assumed we were going to record this episode right after I finished reading it. And then it's now yeah. been a whole month. Yeah, I don't know why we waited so long. I don't know why either. This it's you. Funny. You're the one who comes up to the schedule, and I'm just here. You're Barbie. I'm just Ken. <laughs> I don't know why I stuck in my head. <gasps> oh my god, this is when I kill you. And with the sister, and you put us in the woods that aren't yours. How am I supposed to make the true crime podcast episode about you if you kill me, too? Oh, I'll make sure to eat Doritos worth of that at the background for your funeral. Oh, my God. No, you oh. gotta eat frozen blueberries out the bag and tacos. I do have frozen blueberries, apparently. Okay, I'm coming over. <laughs> um, so, um... Mar and Bass are uh, chosen to join a meeting uh, for some revolution stuff. Cough, cough. Technically, only Bass is. Um, I literally the next. I thought that was so funny, honestly. Bass. Um, so uh, we learned that. Uh, so the captain's all like, "Hey, I don't know if I can trust you." Um, to Mar and uh, I don't know if it was Tito who brought it up, but it's basically brought up that Mar uh, would never work with Spanish because the Spanish are who killed their mother. But also, it's hinted that something more may have happened there. Um, that has to do with Mars magic, so yay. Um, so when they were a child, uh, a Spanish military man, um, basically explained that a uh, Spanish military man was just walking on the beach with this woman, um, where, uh, Mar and their mother lived while their father was out on the ocean, right? And, um, they were just out there using some, a little bit of magic, having a good time. Uh, they didn't recognize the danger of it at that point. Um, even though, uh, when they would walk around shirtless as a youngin, um, people would give them weird faces due to the tattoos, quote, unquote. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, the military man, uh, tried to shoot Mar. Um, because, oh my god, uh, I think he called them the devil or demon or something like that. Um, and goes to shoot them, but their mother uh, stepped in front and uh, to save them and died. I love how this... Yeah. I don't know what type of person it was. Just... I don't remember. Uh, was like, yeah, I'm going to see this child and just because it looks... Diff like, it looks like there's he something, Spanish. you know... He was Spanish. <laughs> okay, funny. yeah. I'm going to shoot it. Like, this is a child. Like, please. Please be so serious. Be yeah. It's really fun when you remember um, who runs the Spanish military. Let's see, I don't know anything about anything. You're gonna, you're gonna have to. <laughs> the person who, no, I mean in this book, the, the person who runs the Spanish military in this book is actually El Diablo this whole fucking time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. I just, mm -hmm. just, 
it, like real, real lore about Fetch and Corp, like the like real the lore situation and the real life like, lore oh my God, of this. A child using magic, meanwhile, his literal boss is the devil. <laughs> yeah. Um. So as you can imagine, um, Mar has some trauma. Um, and in anger, uh, over seeing their mother murdered right in front of them, um, they screamed causing a volcano nearby to erupt and kill everyone else in the village. Honestly, Honestly the icon. They're so real for that. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, I get I'd it. I'd do the same thing if I could. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're okay. The meeting is in a rundown Catholic church, but the other party is late. Uh, Mar, there's vibes. this whole thing about um, the Catholic church because, like, um, a lot of people who are uh, natives to the Caribbean were forced into the Catholic religion um, and whatnot. Who would have thought? I know, right? Um, that people are, are... Imagine white people forcing people of color into something they do not want. Who would could have fucking imagine something like that? I don't have any more, so I gotta sip water now. Who would have thought white people need hobbies? Honestly. Um, yeah. Um, so, like, there's this whole thing when Mars outside looking at the cross, and it's like, if the people who built this could see me now. <laughs> um, and, like, and they're the, so rough. The, the church they built um, being used as a meeting spot for the revolution against the people, dumb, um, the people who built it. Yeah. Um, Mars finds a uh, bass hot. Um, yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, only not. is there Spanish people in this church, but <laughs> they're also being gay! Yes! <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so, well, they're waiting back, it's, like, just lounging around in, um, one of the cathedral, like, I, I, is it, it's not like a pier, is it? No, I forget the official term, but, um, you would think I would know as someone who used, used to go to one of these churches, but what do I know? Um, so, uh, he's just, like, half asleep lounging in one of them. And Mar is just... In the pews? Yes, pews. There you go. Um, I knew it started with P-E. <laughs> uh, it's a four-letter word, bestie! Yeah? <laughs> I got sane. Um, so, uh, they're sitting next to each other, and, uh, Bess is, like, half asleep, so she's really asleep. And Mar is just watching him sleep and being like, Yeah, he hot kind of annoying, <laughs> which I get. When I find a man hot, I also find it annoying. I wouldn't know that feeling. I just know that people are annoying, so. That is true. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me? Um, Have I made you feel better yet today? Yes. Um. You're welcome. So, uh. You should thank me for making you feel better. <laughs> Dami is, like, invisible to everyone else, uh, as long as they want to be. So, uh, they're, like, just... So are, just so are the people I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you're insane. We already know this. Um, so, uh, Dami basically just sits right behind Mar and hints that Mar's powers are more than they know. Um, and... That they could, like, I don't know kill somebody. I don't know. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> Mar and Bass have, like, this whole conversation, um, about how, uh, Bass is like, you don't really like me much, and Bass, Mar is like, well, as far as, as long as I've known you, you've, like, been really low-key, like, half, like, trying to make jokes about my trauma, and also, um, as far as I know, you don't really do anything, um, like, among the ship. Um, you don't do any work. You just force me to do work. And Bass is like, oh, so being the ship's sailing master isn't enough, which is the person who, um, carts, uh, carts? What? Charts, um, the, uh, traveling He's route pretty. And which is very He's difficult to do and takes a lot of fucking math. Uh, he's pretty, but also knows how knowledge, the, and, um, he knows how math, map, maps work. He's pretty, but he knows how ocean work. Yeah. So, <laughs> in theory, he gay and can do math, so, in theory, he wouldn't be able to drive. Drive, i.e. steer ship. Yes, which is funny, because Mar has history of being able to drive ships, but Mar, when their father tried to teach them how to, um, oh my god, they couldn't do it. They found it very <laughs> difficult, which is why they're like really surprised Bass can do it. 
Um, and it's like, wow, okay, never mind, I'm sorry, I'm a dumbass. Um, which means, Mar is gay and can drive, but can't do that. <laughs> I don't know if this was intentional by the author, but I fucking It love feels it. something that would be, honestly, and I'm gay, but I can't drive or do math. So, what does that I'm make gay, me? I can do math, but I can't drive. We're gonna have to find another gay. Well, does it even do out? Who can drive us around? No, does it even out that I'm gay and can't do anything if I'm gay but also use she gay pronouns? <laughs> does it does that even it out? <laughs> Maybe it's because you're like a double identity. You get. Double. Nothing. I get nothing. You get double gay, and then you, it, it, instead of being two positives, it's two negatives. <laughs> yeah. It just cancels out. Yeah. I'm fine. Um. Uh. So finally, the woman that they're supposed to meet with it shows up. Um. She's like a really big deal in the revolution. Um. We love a badass, beautiful woman who could stab someone. And by that I mean I love a badass, beautiful woman who could stab someone. Yes. I feel like I should also mention that around the time that I read this book, I decided to rewatch our Five Mean Step, which is a gay pirate show, starring uh. I forget his name. Taika Waititi. I think that's his name. Um, I don't know anything about any of this. Um, it's a very good gay book. Or gay book. Go gay show. Um, very good gay pirate show. You know, it's a lot of, like, these two grown men trying to pirate the same, uh, or captain the same pirate ship. Um, just uh, two gay guys from two completely different worlds just hanging out, pretending that they're not gay together, and then realizing, oh shit, we're gay together. You know... <laughs> You know, what if I want to watch it? <laughs> you should watch it. I did tell you a lot about it as I was watching it. And you were like, I want to watch this. And then I finished watching it on my own. Wow. You know, someday when I rewatch Heartstopper, in my defense, it's your fault. You're the one that forced me to read Nick and Charlie. Yeah, I'm forcing you to be obsessed I with Nick and Charlie the way I am. Again. I did, for the second half of reading that book, I did listen to Dover Beach the whole entire time. As you should. Yeah. Dover Beach and Want Me are literally the some of the two of the best songs on the soundtrack. I, I, I'm awesome. sorry. Um, okay, the next... Uh, no, I'm obsessed with... No, the first time I watched Fire Supper and I heard Dover Beach, and then I listened to the soundtrack and I heard Dover Beach completely, I was so obsessed with that song. Like, you know what? Hold on. I gotta go. I gotta do some research. I gotta, I gotta research something about Dover Beach real quick. You do that. Um, so, uh, the woman shows up, and Bass gets her to, uh, meet Mar. Uh, Mar's like, oh my god. She's, like, revolutionary. Uh, I, what is the word I'm trying to think of? Um, she's basically, like, super famous in the revolution and all this stuff, so Mar's, like, freaking out. Um... And she offers Bass and Mar a job. Um, Bass instantly declines, um, and then um, Mar declines too, but she gives them a paper in case they change their mind, um, which is basically a way to meet up with her in case they change their mind, um, how to locate her um, and contact her. Um, everyone goes to a bar and drink, uh, where Tito pulls Mar aside to finally talk. Um... Dover Beach is my 43rd most streamed song of all time. I love that for you. I did listen to it for like 16 bajillion years today, so. Yes, I, I had to go count those by hand. Um, Tito. <gasps> Sorry, I just. Let's talk about your hair by Have Mercy was in my top five songs for literally like two or three years, and now it's at the very bottom of this list. I love that for you. Uh, Tito offers them help because, uh, Mar is not the first magic person Tito has met. Um, and this is the first Mar has heard of other magic users, um, and there's apparently an island of magic users, um, and all this stuff. Um, so I have some notes. Uh, it, when it's mentioned, the island is some hard-to-find place in the Caribbean. I instantly thought Bermuda Triangle looked up, and they are in the same area. So, like, there's a chance. It's never confirmed where the island is. Um, but, like, my theory is Bermuda Triangle. 
something to do with that. Um, also, uh, I also wrote down the note, uh, this is like if Cemetery Boys and, uh, my other favorite gay pirate book, um, In Deeper Waters, literally, there's no gay pirates in it, but he has fire magic and it's gay. And also, um, his part, he, he, the person, um, he's into in the book is, um, the last merman, and he's the last fire magic user, um, and so basically, it's gay shark boy and lava girl, but with pirates. Um, and it's like if that and Cemetery Boys had a baby. I'm trying to get you to read both of these other books. Um, I, you know, one of these days. Um, so it's hinted that Mars' maternal grandmother is from the island. Um, yes. Tito promises to protect them like he couldn't do for his love, who is the person that he knew who had magic from a long time ago. Um, they board, uh, oh, uh, they board a Spanish ship, uh, and the crew frees the slaves while, um, searching the ship. Uh, Mar finds a man hiding who shoots them. But the bullet kills him instead, and Mars smells sulfur when this happens. That's a big deal. Um, also, like, it's this whole thing where, um, when they free the slaves, they are like, hey, you can either work with us or go to the next stopping location. And the slaves are like, um, excuse me, the next location you're going to stop at is this location, which is also run over by the Spanish. So basically, we'll just become slaves there. Um, so either way, we're not free. We have to work for you. And then the captain's like, okay, see your point. You can work for me as long as you want, and whenever you want to leave, you can leave. Um, so whenever we stop somewhere for you, feel safe, you can go. So that's a nice thing. We love that. Um, yeah. Bass comes running uh, when he hears the gunshot, um, worried for Mar, and uh, hugs Mar when he finds them alive. A little gay. Do you, do you think Bass likes Mar or something? <sighs> there may be a slight chance. Um... Who would have thought that Bass would ever like Mar? Who would have thought? Who, who would have thought that? They arrive at land to drop off cargo um, and spend the day um, with Bass. And uh, we learn that, oh yeah, so there's like an old Mayan like temple almost um, that is kind of run down and all this stuff. Um, and we learn that Mar is Mayan from their smother side. Um, and that which is like because the ma hinted at the magic also come from the mother side some things there um you know i think is it mine that is i don't quote me on this but i think in the second black panther movie which oh my god did i cry um i've never yeah, seen either of them shut up. it's fine i'm a nerd mm -hmm. um but i think yeah i know mine culture is used in that it may be mine it may not i don't quote me on that um, but yeah, it's, I it's, won't. that's where some of their tattoos come from, uh, because there's one of, like, is it a tiger or a lion or some type of, like, beast I think like it's that, a tiger. Um, on, I think their back, and, yes. uh, their mother, um, was, like, told them of the story and all this stuff. Um, and there's a lot of grief about, uh, the last part of their culture that they'll never have because of some, you know, people who are white, cough, cough, the Spanish. <laughs> um, and what else? Also sad about, like, this rundown, um, temple that, uh, is basically destroyed because of, um, taking over, uh, these people's culture because, yay, um, you know, so many things have happened in this world because white people never had hobbies. You know, you could say that this is their hobby, which is kind of almost worse. <laughs> No, I don't think it's a hobby. I think it's people being good people. Yeah. You know? Um, so, uh... So, like, get a hobby and stop doing bad things. Yeah. Um... Uh, get a hobby! <laughs> this is my hobby. What the fuck are you talking about? Um, so, every the whole crew goes to a bar, um, where they're all, like, ha having fun, drinking. Um, Bass is, like... I think competing with Tito or something. Um, so everyone's watching that. Yes. So while everyone's watching that, and Mars also watching this, having a good time. But while they're watching this, they are also um, freezing and unfreezing their glass over and over again. 
subtly, uh, in a way that no one will know is like leaning back in their chair, but then a suspicious man walks into the bar. Um, while they were hanging out with Bass on the beach, they also saw the man there, and it was like, huh? Um, so, uh, then Bass, who is kind of drunk, um, walks over to Mar, calls Mar a beautiful boy, and sits on their lap. And, you know, he's still real for that. I wonder if he, he may be a little gay. I think we're friends. Who, who would have thought? Who would have thought that Bass would be a little fruity? You know, they are pirates. Um, so, um... The Spanish army enter the bar. Uh, Mar feels bad for enjoying all the fighting and death since it's one of the few places Mar can release magic without other people noticing. Because the only person who will notice the magic being used will be the person the magic is being used against, and that person will have died from the magic. So, uh, like, I'm pretty sure they, like, freeze a guy's lungs or something like that, or, like, dumps a drink down this guy's throat and, like, freezes it in their throat or something like that. Mar shoves a bottle of whatever beer, I assume, down a guy's throat, and then he, like, grabs him by the throat and, like, freezes it. Mm -hmm. So, like, dude has a bottle in his mouth and, like, freezes in his mouth. So, um... I think I remember everything in this book! I don't know. Never another theory of mine, cough, cough. Tommy, uh, has been trying to get Mar to use magic this whole time, and right after another attempt, Mar sees the fatherless, suspicious maid into the bar, um... Uh, and I was like, is this a ploy by Dami to get Mar to use their magic? Basically, yes. Um, yeah. Uh, the captain attacks Mar because right before, uh, the Spanish attacked, Mar went to the captain and was like, hey, I think we should leave. I'm suspicious of this guy. Um, I have a bad feeling. And so the captain's like, oh my god, you're a spy for the Spanish. You know that they were coming. Um, yeah. Because they got the morning from their magic, right? Um, and is holding Mar up against a tree by their throat, and, uh, Bass and Tito save them. Um, I... nothing. I'm not sure. Anyways. Uh, brain the, be braining. The crew of Bass are being who they consider Mar one of them, which is, like, this big moment for Mar, because they're, like, because, like, a few members of the crew are like, you okay, my dude? Uh, and Mar's like, oh my god, I have a new family. <laughs> um... Uh, another ship raid is about to happen when Mar is suspicious of the ship, uh, due to magic stuff, and, um, yeah, tries to warn the captain, the captain's like, you know, sometimes a feeling is just a feeling, Mar, and, uh, goes after the ship. Mm, I don't know about um, that one. And it was a trap, uh, so, uh, do the trap, uh, okay, so yeah, they're all on the run, there's like a chasing ship scene, uh, who needs car chasing when you have ship chasing scenes? Um, Real. Honestly, ship chasing separate, scenes? Ten times um, more exciting. Captain, Tito, Bass, and Mar hide in the swamp, but they're all eventually captured. The whole entire crew is eventually captured. Um, while they are being captured, um, Bass and Mar are holding hands, and they prowl the next day. Um, and basically it's just, like, a thing where, um, everyone who's found a pirate, like, uh, take it in for piracy, it's found guilty, and then executed. So, they're all going to basically die. Piracy is such a funny word to me. I don't know why. It just sounds funny, like piracy. Um, like <laughs> They're, um... Mar has a low-key escape plan for them and Bass, um, because they are sharing a cell. They split it up so there's, like, two people per cell room. Um, Demi can float and did bring the Spanish to, uh, Mar, and a quote for fun. Um, the captain sees them use magic, uh, while trying to, um, you like, melt the bars and whatnot. Um, I'm sorry, the way you have it said, oh, Capitan, Capitan, whatever, the, this whole time is so sad to me, because reading the words El Capitan, is it Capitan, Capitan? I don't fucking know. I... I barely speak English. I hate to be one of those people, but it's true. It just scratches my brain so nicely. <laughs> I believe you. Um, but yes, Captain sees this, um, and, uh, helps them escape with Bass. Um, basically it's like, uh, hey, you gotta get Bass out of here. Um, and distracts the guards by choking one of them out. So all the you know what guards, it sounded like? It sounded like you have to get baptized here. I was like, okay. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the other guards go to help, uh, that one guard, um, 
and whatnot. I think that guard drops his keys and they steal it. I don't know. Um, and they sneak out the door with Bass. And Bass is like, oh my god, we gotta save everyone. And, um, Mars like, uh, no, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, there's, like, this whole thing where, like, there's, like, them running through this, basically, gel, um, cell, all this stuff. Um, they also know that, uh, when they are found guilty, they're gonna go to a more high-security prison, um, until they are executed. Fun, fun. Um, but there's, like, this whole escape thing, uh, and in order to escape, they have to melt the bars on this window in a room that they've barricaded themselves in, um, while the guards are knocking down the door, uh, and so Bass sees them use magic, and so, uh, yeah, Bass tries to get them to use it to save everyone, and, uh, they're like, listen, I wish I could, but, like, I don't have that much power, and also, your dad literally helped us escape seeing me have magic just to get you out of here, so, um, or, uh, oh yeah, Bass's other plan, so, like, they explain to Bass about ma their magic and how everyone on their ship died because they didn't have enough magic to, like, stop the devil from killing everyone due to a deal that, uh, their dad made and all of this stuff. And Bass is like, cool, so we can make a deal with El Diablo to fix this? Uh, and Mars like, no? Um, they stop and get food before continuing to search for- Honestly, I love how Bass is, like- can we make a dough with El Diablo? Yeah. And, uh, Mars, like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, so like, just, I, goes off on his own, um, and eventually... It's giving... He, he was sunshine, I was midnight rain, or whatever. Like, whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Mar eventually goes after Bass. After getting some food, very nice bar owner, um, gives him food, um, or tavern owner give them food for free, um, and all this stuff, um, I think there's another conversation with Dami, um, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and explains they want Mars help to kill El Diablo, um, uh, because that's a normal sentence to say to someone, yeah, um, so basically it's explained how, uh, El Diablo gets his power by, um, taking the souls of those he makes a deal with, and then those people become eventually demons, who then make deals with people and get their soul. And then those people eventually become demons and make deals with people to get their souls. So basically I wrote down Diablos are powered via soul pyramid schemes. Mm hmm What do what do you think the name of the ML is called? Uh Diablo Enterprise? <laughs> uh Lululemon. Well Mary Kay. Mary Kay. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, <laughs> I'm staying here at the same fucking time. I can't do this. Um, so, uh, ba uh, not Bass, uh, Mara explains that the one time, uh, they y tried to use magic in a large mount, um, or something like that, is when the volcano, uh, erupted and everyone literally fucking died. Um, and, uh, Dobby says the volcano was one time, uh, and, and, like, Mars, like, have you ever... It wasn't one time that you... Out of I got to... Because magic, that's why I don't fucking use it. And Dom was like, it was only one time. And Mars just storms out, rightfully, um, to go find Bass. Um, which they do, uh, find. Um, Bass is, like, low-key, has this plan where he's going to be taken by the soldiers to be taken back to the crew and then find a way to, um, get them out from the inside. But, um... Mar saves him, uh, and then he's, like, upset that Mar saved him, and all this stuff. But there's a heartwarming moment before, um, agreeing to help rescue the crew. Uh, but then, uh, Bats is, like, actually heard, overheard, um, the soldiers say that they moved the crew to a more secure prison. The more secure prison that's basically impossible to get into. Um, so the, uh, revolutionary, uh, female icon they met earlier who gave them, like, the paper on how to find her and whatnot, they use that, um, because it's the same city, uh, I think it's her sister was in, uh, which is yes. how the paper says to find her and all this stuff. Um, so, uh, no, it's her cousin. And, um, it's also, like, the local rebellion, they go there, um, and, uh, it's, like, a super rich house and all this stuff, and Bess is, like, stealing silverware, and Mars like, dude, stop! I love that part. That was so funny. Um, and, like, the grandma, like, character is, like, 
Yeah, no, I know he's still in support. It's fine. Um, and all this stuff. Um, basically, uh, they explained that they want to break the crew out of the, uh, holding in the super secure prison. And the cousin's, like, the cousin of this super big rebellious person, um, revolutionary woman, um, it's all like, listen, I would love to help you, but you're literal children, so, like, I can find you other positions and whatnot, but, like, no. Um, I'm not risking lives of young revolutionaries for this. Um, and then, uh, to get them to agree to help them, Mar, um, shows that they have magic to show that they have, um, the ability to get out if they get stuck and all this stuff. And, uh, so the revolutionaries are like, cool, yeah! We're gonna work together, because they also have people inside, stuck inside the same prison, um, so, like, get all these people out, right? Makes sense. Um, it seems like it's, like, this just giant, deep, underground tower-like thing. <laughs> um, bunker where they keep all the revolutionaries and pirates and stuff like that. So, like, by breaking in and breaking out all the people, uh, it will, like, bring back the revolution in tenfold, because, like, the revolution is dying because a lot of the people are being taken mm -hmm. by the speech, um, to this place. So by rescuing all these people, they will have a much larger army to fight the Spanish with, right? Makes sense. Um, so, uh, she tells them to interrogate, uh, Mar, who to interrogate, which is, like, this one soldier who's always drunk on this one day, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Mar Isn't is he, like, like, the, like, he's, like, a higher up, though? Yes. Um, Mar uses their magic to induce fear to this guy to learn where the crew is being held. Um, Bass is also there, and it's just like, what the fuck? Um, so Mar and Brass, uh, Brass? What? Mar and Bass <laughs> break in by hiding in a supplies cart full of uniforms. Um, they're holding hands in the supply cart. They're um, so real for that. So, uh, the guy who brings in the cart, uh, They've been holding hands, basically, like, since, like, since this one. Yeah, just, they never let go. <laughs> they never let go. Um, so, um, even when, uh, Bass left out of anger from Mar not letting him make a deal with El Diablo, they were still holding hands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, basically, They have really long arms. So, this guy, uh, who brings in all the supplies for the army, it technically works for the revolution. Um, so, basically, he brings in his stuff, um, and he will distract the guards once he gets them to the stairs, and they will sneak out the s back of the cart, um, down the stairs. That is the plan. Um, right? Uh, and they're going down the stairs. Apparently, uh, that's the plan. Th and they know, have no clue how to get further down, um, where they need to go, when Dobby appears behind them, saying, too bad Mar doesn't have an inside invisible tour guide. But, of course, Mar doesn't need their help. Um, in a snarky, funny way, um, Bass can't see Dami, so, like, Mar's just having this whole conversation with Dami right there, and Bass is just like, hello! I'm Mar, and uh, everybody else is a Bass, and, you know. Yeah. Um, Dami guides them through with the deal, Mar will hear them out, um, about killing El Diablo, uh, but <sighs> the trap was no one in the cell, uh, cornered. They're cornered, and Dami, uh, just instantly disappears, and leaves. Um, and then this is what I wrote down. I think I love prison breaks in books. I really do like them. They're really interesting. Um, I think I, I feel like I've only read, like, a handful, but they are pretty fun. I've only read a handful of them, but I like them. Um, like this one, the one attempted in Percy Jackson. So, I don't know about uh, any others off the top of my head. <laughs> so, uh, Bass and Mar are backed up against this wall, um, down this hallway, of cells that are completely empty, and there's all these soldiers pointing their guns at them, about to shoot them, so Mar makes a very, 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 very thick of wall of ice between them and the soldiers. Um, uh, so they can't really get shot, but, like, also they can't get out of there, because, like, there's no way to get out. Um, it's fine. So, good times. Um, so, they do eventually get out, blah, 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 like, they fight them, all this stuff. Um, Bass is like, listen, there's only one way out, and that's by going through them, let's go. But then, the soldiers are gone. What? That's so weird. They go upstairs, um, there's the soldiers, uh, pointing the guns at all of the crew, um, making them surrender. Yay! Sorry, I just, do they really recognize them that heavily that they just know that these are the people they want, like, yeah. specifically this whole group? Like, I don't know, that was weird to me. I think it's part of El Diablo's plan to get them out. Well, you know, just... <laughs> you know. Um, 
So, uh, Mar Let me question things. Let me not understand things okay, occasionally. Okay, Mar and Bass are in cells again. Um, and while in a cell, uh, Mar has to hear Dami's, uh, plan out. Because part of the deal, right, that they made with yes. Dami. Um, and agrees to a deal where they try to kill El Diablo and in payment, uh, Mar and Bass escape. Um... And the crew's execution is pushed back so they can try again, and Mar gets a, um, flat chest. That's also part of the deal. Mar gets a flat chest. Um, also part of this is, like, I haven't mentioned it, but Dami, um, basically shapeshifter and can look like however they want to look. And it's this whole thing where Mar's very jealous of this ability. Um, and so Mar's like, I'd like a flat chest so I don't have to wear my bindings all the time. And they're like, sure, I'll throw that in for free. Like, I don't fucking care. Um, very nice. Um, very There's obvious, the room um, for that, I guess. Using each other as um, you know, good times. Um, I feel like that makes sense though, because you you didn't mention that like every time Johnny appears, they look slightly different because they can just you know. Yeah. Uh, also sometimes they look more masculine. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. yeah. Um. Also, El Diablo takes become demons. Does that mean Mars father is a demon now? The answer is no. Um. Also, Mar has a concussion. So, um, when, when, uh, Dami breaks away so that, uh, Bass and Mar can get to each other, um, Bass is like, dude, the fuck? Um, they have to climb down a window, um, Bass has to catch Mar, um, and then they get to safety, uh, helps them get to the last room in a boarding house, um, uh, and the room only has one bed, <coughs> It's fine. I'm fine. Why did I start writing down Dominic's <laughs> Dima now? I don't know. I don't know. No, Dom the one bed thing reminded me of something, but I will refrain. Okay, Dami forces Mar to compliment them to cure the concussion. Um, yeah. Um, they're like, I'll make a deal with you. If you compliment me, I will cure your concussion. And they agree to it. Um... Right before leaving, Dami uh, informs Mar they won't need their binding anymore. Uh, suddenly, uh, informs them. Um, oh, and then I wrote, hear me out, new idea for coupling. Um, Dami, Bass, and Mar Thruffle. Oh my god. Imagine it. Um, so, Bass is out. Uh, I could, honestly. Bass, I think Bass is out getting food or something, right? Uh, and so, as soon as Bass is gone, Mar's like, oh my god, takes off their shirt, and, like, uh, takes off their binding for the first time in, like, possibly months. Uh, absolutely months, because it was August, uh, when this book started, and it's, like, almost near the, uh, due date of making the decision whether or not to trade their soul for their fathers, uh, which was end of September. So, it's been months. Um, I can imagine how that feels. <sighs> being able to mm -hmm. take that off for the first time in forever. Um, but also they have a flat chest now. Yes. So they're looking at the mirror and oh my god they have a flat chest. Yes. Uh, when Bass returns Mar is still shirtless and um, Mar is very happy because they don't have to hide. Um, and they can just be shirtless and be themselves. Iconic. Um, And uh, some flirting happens. And then Bass also yeah. removes his shirt. Just normal things. Casual things. Normal I things. I down in parentheses, I screamed. Um, Real. Um, they get Man, I want a burrito. Where Bass calls Mar the most beautiful boy he's ever seen. What if I bash my head against the wall? Like, um, because of this fight, Mar runs away. I think it's like this whole fight about using the African one. I, I don't remember. Um, and eventually reaches some... Probably. What else would it be about? I don't know. Reaches some burning houses. Um, so, because having fire magic, they're fireproof. So they run in, um, because there's this lady who's all like, oh my god, my baby's inside. Um, I love how casually, in. you just casually said, oh yeah, they're fireproof. Blah, 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 blah. Like, <laughs> um, so they go inside, uh, save the baby, and put out the fire, um, with their magic, um, finally accepting their power, everyone, um, calls them an angel, which is, like, this first time they've really been accepted other than the crew, um, their father's crew, uh, for their magic. For, like, for the most part, they've only viewed themselves, uh, due to this one Spanish person who shot their mother, um, as a demon, uh, because of their magic. So being called an angel, <clears throat> and miracle, um, 
you know, uh, very... It's, like, crazy. It, it really affects them, and it's very sweet. Uh, Mar returns to the room to find Bass crying over Mar, thinking the Spanish found them. Um, honestly, Mar, my beloved. Like, honestly. So, uh, now it's time to make a plan to kill El Diablo. Mar and Bass share the one bed, um, and Mar considers it the best sleeping quarters they've ever had. <sighs> It's fine. Dommy wakes them up. Uh, Bass says he really believes Mar is the most beautiful boy he's ever seen, and they almost kiss. Um, yeah. So the play. Of I'm the sorry. Class. Can we talk about the fact they only kissed him once in this fucking book? Like, oh my god, criminal! Yeah, obviously, criminal. Uh, obviously, we need uh, the trauma of not being able to see them kiss the whole book. <sighs> the same thing was. Am I gonna have to actually well. start reading like, fan fiction at this point? Together. Am I gonna have to start watching, watching, reading fan fiction again? Like, ugh. I still have the two Curse So Dark and Lonely ones open on my phone. I fine. love that for you. Um, so I haven't read them. The plan to fight El Diablo is basically, um, to distract El Diablo. Bass will go in as someone who wants to make a deal, uh, to save the crew. Um. El Diablo will be able to see into his mind, so he has to be uh, very much, like, uh, into this, like, wanting to make a deal to save the crew, which best, like, shouldn't be a triple, like, I would like to. Um, and then while this happens, Mar will watch, um, and until they get every moment to, uh, take down and try to attack El Diablo, and while they're attacking El Diablo, everyone in else in the bar will be taken out by, um, Bass, who will try to save everyone else, right? Um, but El Diablo instantly notices that Mars there. And he's like, haha, I know you're here, and doesn't fall through the trap. And then bum bum bum, El Diablo is actually the leader of the Spanish army. Wow, I already said this much earlier on. Um, honestly, yeah. that was really shocking. Like, I did not expect yeah. that at all. So, um, Mar now has to face off against El Diablo and the whole entire Spanish army in this city. Like, this is normal Even thing to happen to a normal teenager, like... Yeah, no, this book went from, like, ooh, we gotta fight El Diablo, I wonder how it'll go, cute boys kissing, blah, 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 to, oh my god, we gotta fight El Diablo and the whole Spanish army in a crowded bar. Oh my god. <laughs> Things get wild in this class 10%. Um... And I was stressed. So... Mind you, I stopped, like, like, right before I'll, like, right, like, I don't... I don't know. Like, I stopped with, like, two chapters left in this book, and I had to read the last few chapters the next morning, and it was crazy. It was, like, a whiplash. Yeah. Um, so, um... And then I read Heartstopper afterwards. <laughs> Those are two different things! Those are two very um, different so things! So, if you me, um, betray them to get, uh, their humanity back, um, it seems like Dami, uh, made a deal with El Diablo just to, um, be, like, it, it seems like El Diablo was almost like a father figure to them and whatnot, um, but they haven't been happy in, like, a long time, and just wish There's me a normal person my floor. and all this stuff, um, so, um, but, uh, actually, this whole, uh, being like, okay, give me Mac my humanity, um, is also actually planned to weaken El Diablo, um, so, uh, basically, when El Diablo's making a deal with someone, uh, is when he's at his weakest, and that's why. Mm -hmm. So, um, Dami Which says, isn't very weak from what he was before. Yes. But that doesn't mean anything, because, yes. uh... <laughs> well, you know. Puppy. Um, which means Dami's yes, coming now, uh, at which point, at one point, Mar is like, are you sure about that? Because, like, now you can't, uh, shapeshift. Um, into whatever form you want to be at that point in time. Um, but they're fine with it, because they probably Honestly, if I was a demon, and I could shape shift, I would not... I would not... I don't want a human soul. Not I become human. I want to... Yeah, I want a shape shift, bitch. What the fuck? That sounds like a good time. You would never know. I could... And like, I would just... I would be shape shifting 27 times a day. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the we so the reason why- Could you um, imagine mid-video, mid-clip, I just shapeshift it? <laughs> just change your hair color every five ways in a fuck. Um, peak gay right there. Um, so, um, 
so the reason why Mar was able to survive uh, the storm at the very beginning of the book was because of the specific wording in the deal that El Diablo made with their father, um, which uh, basically the wording was something like uh, the deal was something with the crew will never have trouble. Um, so like that's why the crew was like one of the best uh, and no one ever got harmed and all this stuff. But also um, my line will continue as in like my child will survive because uh, his child had been stillborn. Um, and then he brought back Mar. Um, so because Mar is the line of their father, Al Diablo cannot kill them because that will go against the deal. And that is why they were able to survive the storm and all this other stuff, um, is because of this. And this is why they will be super powerful, cough, cough. Um, so... I want um, you to know, I told her to smile for that picture, and then she smiled. I... I want to see puppy. Look at oh, the puppy! Oh, I told her to smile, and she smiled and did it. And she um, loves me or something. So, uh, it turns into a fight on the beach. Uh, the Revolutionary Army comes, um, and is fighting the Spanish with Bass and Dami, while, uh, Mar is up against El Diablo. Good times! Um... So, uh, basically the fight, uh, is, uh, so, <laughs> Mar is basically letting El Diablo win, um, kind of, cough, cough, uh, where El Diablo's, like, trying to drown them in the ocean and all this stuff, um, and it's not working, because Mar knows, um, because they had a secret conversation with Dami, where Dami's like, yeah, so, um, actually this plan would not work, but this, if, this would work if you went up against El Diablo, because El Diablo cannot harm you, because of the deal with your father. They cannot harp. He cannot harp you. So you, um, can easily win. So basically, um, yeah, they the can't way die whenever this... El Diablo fights them. Yeah. The way this only worked because of a loophole. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure also El Diablo tries to stab them, a bunch of stuff, and it just doesn't bother them. Um, and uh, so basically, uh, Mar tricks El Diablo and then pulls magma from the Earth's core and covers El Diablo with it and then hardens it around him, turning his bones to char. Yes, because that is a normal sentence that normal people say because, it's oh my like god. a multiple page scene that this all happens, but that's basically the gist of it. Like, basically, they pull magma from the Earth's core, surround El Diablo. El Diablo's like, oh, what the fuck? The whole time. Yeah. Uh -huh. Surrounds him. Uh, it, and then hardens it. So, like, he's being cooked alive, and so, uh, he, his, uh, body, like, his flesh turns to ash, and his bones turn to char, and all this stuff. Um, and, like, there's a possibility he could come back, but, like, maybe not. Um, they rescue all the prisoners from the, uh, jail, and, uh, the crew accepts Mar still, um, despite the fact that Mar has magic. Um, flirting between Bass and Mar on the beach, uh, they kiss. Um, Hell yeah. There's a question of whether or not Mar is immortal, um, since also there was a time that the soldier, of ra or not, oh yeah, soldier on that random ship. <gasps> we um, skipped over them. something very important. <sighs> okay, um, about the beach they, scene. I will get to it. So they got. I mean, not the beach. You know what I mean. They got shot. Um, but then uh, the bullet just turned around and killed the other guy, and all that stuff. So like, are they just straight up immortal? Who knows. Um, That's and a really good question, though. Um, none of the other crew is alive, but they have their father again. Um, what what was it? Boo! Oh, I wish Leo was here too. <laughs> Me too. Um, what, honestly, what I preferred Leo. <laughs> Me too. Um, Leo doesn't misgender them. Um, mispronoun them. Um, what's what's your what's the thing I forgot? The bullet. Oh. El Diablo. <laughs> Yeah, no, I didn't write it down because I remember being like, oh, I'll remember that. But you didn't. No. And I don't know how. I think about that every once in a while. I'm like, goddamn. Okay, you talk about the bullet. Okay, if you remember, in the beginning, uh, Mara's father tries to shoot El Diablo, and then El Diablo spits out the bullet into his hand and tucks it into Mara's pocket. Um, and then we flash back to the end where Mara is fighting El Diablo, and El Diablo tries to shoot Mar, 
Um, but they spit out the bullet and put it in El Diablo's pocket. Yeah, oh, I you love it. Really. I love it here. I love that shit. I eat it up. Yes, we love having my pick a good book for the podcast. Kitty cat. Kitty um, cat. Do you have anything else to say about the book? What did you even rate it? 4.5. Oh, that sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that sounds about right. Thanks. Thanks. You I rate everything 4 cat. to 5 stars. And then there's Shut me. Up. This month, I've been real good. I'm at 4.08. Because you're reading gay page. books. Yes, it's all the gay books. Like a little kitty cat. Well, it's I so cute. have an empty soul. Wow, come over. No you can play with a kitty cat. Too. Well, come over. I'm telling you, come over. My dog's downstairs. But you don't want to come over. <laughs> it's almost like you're halfway across the fucking country. I don't know what you're talking about. I live in your walls. True. Did you shoot a kitty cat? Yes, I did. Little baby kitty cat, kitty cat, kitty cat. What are we going to name you? Are we going to name you August? Are we going to name you Crosshatch? Are we going to name you Wicker? I feel like Wicker or Hatch would be really cute. Or we can name you August because you're stupid like August and fell in the toilet yesterday. Is August the one that's afraid of water? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's very funny. Does that make you the jack to your cat's August? I do see things occasionally. Yeah, 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 that's the joke I was making. Oh, well, you know. I make too many jokes about seeing things. I don't see things that often, I promise. I'm okay in my head, I think. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this kitty cat. You can't see the kitty cat, but like, look at this kitty cat. It's so tiny. It's like over a month old, but it's like the mom didn't feed it and stuff. So it's like tiny, tiny. Uh-oh. Ay, 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 ay. I ain't got no skin on my thumb. It hurts. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Uh, it's true. I'm always missing like 27 layers of skin on my thumb. That's normal. I don't know why. I don't know why that became a thing. I don't know why either. Kitty cat. Are you my little kitty? Mom's mad because the cat likes me more, but I'm I've been taking care of this kitty. Cat, so. Yeah. Yeah. See, so it's just me and a kitty cat. See, so me and every Ray and a kitty cat. See, Emmy Ray's got a kitty cat. I don't think she likes a kitty cat, but too bad. She got herself a kitty cat. She's got to be nice to the kitty cat. I kind of just want to call it kitty cat. It's fun to call it kitty cat, you know? <laughs> you said kitty cat like the kitty cat. <laughs> I love saying kitty cat, okay? I love it. It's like kitty cat. <laughs> How about we just clip that whole entire video where you just go kitty cat for like a minute? <laughs> And you should also clip the uh, MLM part where we're like, Mary Kay. Mary Kay? We'll, we'll see if I remember. I'll remind you. Well, you gotta edit it. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. Last time I edited an episode, I was like, ooh, this is a great part to clip. And then I couldn't fucking find the part. After I finished editing it, I was like, I give up. I hate my life. I still haven't even posted any of that. I still have to edit them and do reels. Oh, you're so cute. You're so tiny. Wait, do you have anything else to say to the podcast? Like a tiny baby kitty cat. I don't you can't think I could tell from using kitty cat a dozen times. Um, what? I, I don't think they could tell from using kitty cat a dozen times. Also, I said <laughs> for the first time today, and I said stay away from depressants. I don't, I did not hear a word you just said. My co-star said to stay away from depressants. Depression? Depressant. Huh? <laughs> Depressant. Depressant. Oh. I heard the first half. I didn't. I couldn't understand the second half of the word. I was like, what the fuck? It's almost like they're telling me to get antidepressants or something. I don't know. Come on, I give you some. 
<laughs> Do barefoot already there? No, you want to see? Mine are mine are really really, you know. Hold on. Let me see. I got me a kitty cat. Mine are do public parks quilts reading aloud. Don't impulsivity hard to get you versus them. Like okay, 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 go star. Like you're not wrong. What are you doing, kitty cat? Kitty cat. He he he. Do you think I like this cat? <laughs> yeah. Um. So um yeah, I guess. The end of the podcast is just you going kitty cat, but to times and then me saying, um, next week's episodes are Nick and Charlie. I know we said it's gonna be something else at the beginning of June. Don't worry about it. We're um, stressed out, okay? We need, we need, yeah. we need something. It's still the same it's, author. Yes, it is. Um, and then, um, I gotta leave Love List Robert, anyways, cause. A worthy opponent. Um, I'm very excited. Um, so that's that. Uh, you do uh, all our links are below. Um, the podcast has an Instagram if you want to see some memes. Ay ay ay! Don't bite uh, my hand. I'm making memes now sometimes. They're worse quality than mine. I'm sorry to admit it. Mine are better. I used the same program as you. Don't you love me? Aren't you proud? I used like Pixar to use, to use the main program. thing to make you the main know. Bella pictures. That's what I used to make it. And then I used Fonto to add the fonts. And I have my own fonts downloaded because, you know, you're really? just using I Pixar fonts. I was like, I'll be cool, like Stingray. Oh and my god. Like, yeah. I made the font. And I went, but, but I mean, it's the same program as you. And I mean, technically, no, you're not. Technically, no, you're not. <laughs> At the. I mean, you are what you are. It's, it's, it doesn't matter. What are we speaking about? I, I hope you know the memes I sent you today, the Wicker King related ones, are in the Wicker King blog. I made them specifically for the Wicker King blog. I love that. Um, this is a rock. So, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, goodbye.